I'm Dr. May Ahmed and today we're going to discuss some cases of neonatal kidney failure. We are going to present two cases and we are going to have some questions and discussions about neonatal kidney failure. Okay, let's start. First case, we're having uh, a baby, one kilogram, gross retarded, female infant born following its 32 weeks of gestation. Spontaneous vaginal delivery, the mother receives two doses of betamethasone and toxolytics with antimethasone. So the antenatal steroid could be administered. The delivery was complicated by maternal fever, chorioaminitis. The infant is now one day old and being managed with CBAP. A parental nutrition containing 2.5 gram per kg amino acid is administered at rate 120 mL per kg per day. Trophic internal feedings are initiated. She's receiving ambisol and gentamicin for the concern of early onset steps. Okay. Uh, the lab values. Serum creatinine was 1 mg per deciliter. Sodium was 139 mL equivalent per liter. Potassium 4.4 mL equivalent per liter. Bun 22 and creat was 1.1. Okay. The infant is making 1 mL per kg per hour urine. First question, does this infant have impaired kidney function? What do you think? Do we have anything that indicates kidney renal function? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, we're having a normal serum creatinine level. There is no uh, indication of uh, rising serum creat. Okay, it was one and then 1.1. It's not a huge rise. If we're talking about the urine output, we're having a proper urine output, one milligram per kg per hour. Uh, when we check the electrolytes, all are at a normal level, so there is no any, uh, there isn't any impaired in kidney function of this baby. Okay, second question. What are the risk factors of neonatal kidney injury in this baby? Okay, let's go back to the case. Okay, the baby was gross restricted. This is an indication of hypoxia, which means that this baby could have pre-renal injury. Okay, uh, being preterm, 32 weeks of gestation is also an indication of um, um, uh, an indication of a risk of pre-renal injury, okay. Also, we have the maternal nephrotoxic medication. The mother was on endomethacin, which is a nephrotoxic drug, as well as that fact that the baby is already taking aminoglycoside, which is a well-known for its nephrotoxicity, especially gentamicin. So, those are the risk factors for re kidney injury in this baby. Okay, uh, third question, what would you expect to happen to serum creatinine over the next few days, weeks? Two things might happen, okay? The first scenario is going to be declining in the serum creatinine. Everything is going back to normal as we agree serum creatinine. And the first few days is actually an indicator of the maternal serum creatinine. It takes a few days in order to decline until it reaches a steady state. So if the baby is going to take the normal bus, this is going to happen. If nephrotoxicity acquired at any condition or pre-renal toxicity acquired at any condition, we are going to see a rising in the serum creatinine and declining in the urine output as we discussed before. If you're interested, in knowing more about renal failure and having all the info on how to manage acute kidney injury, uh, how to diagnose it, and how to manage the complication, it's very, uh, you can join us and take our course. You're going to have a lot of knowledge and it's a very, very useful course. Okay, let's check the second case. Second case. One day old girl born at 26 weeks gestation via vaginal delivery. Two days following premature, pre, premature rupture of membrane. Her birth weight was 750 gram. Abgar score was 5 and 6, which means that the baby was hypoxic and needed resuscitation. 
Okay, she was intubated and given surfactant. Um, after blood specimen was withdrawn for culture, she started ambicillin and gentamicin and maintenance IV fluid. She failed to pass urine in the first 24 hours of birth. Her blood pressure was persistently low at 30-20. Okay, the first question, when should newborn pass the first urine after birth? As we mentioned before, babies should pass urine after birth, okay? We are talking about in the first 24 hours, 100% of neonates should pass urine. Then the first 24 hours of birth, okay? Usually 50% void at 8 hours of birth, okay? So not passing urine in the first 24 hours indicate that there is a problem in this baby okay second question what should you do to evaluate and treat this infant so this question we're having two parts the evaluation part and the treatment part let's talk about serum creatinine serum creatinine does not increase until the renal function is reduced by 25 to 50 percent This baby required resuscitation, as we said before, Abgar's score was low, 5 to 6, required resuscitation at birth, and has persistent hypotension, as they mentioned before. Those two could serve for a pre-renal injury, okay, so for evaluation, we're having the lab values, we're having also the history that indicates AKI, okay. For the treatment, we are going to give normal saline with dose 20, 10 ml per kg and this dose can be repeated if there is no significant improvement. We are going to insert catheter in order to check the input and the output and in order to be able to see whether the baby is dehydrated, whether the kidney is functioning well or not. Okay. Also, if blood pressure persists, we will start dopamine immediately in order to increase the renal blood flow okay uh, third question is she's risk at, for gentamicin toxicity gentamicin is the most toxic in the aminoglycoside family it's, it's widely used in neonates as it works very well with beta lactams to treat early sepsis so it's actually used a lot in neonates however it's nephrotoxic, it's well known for, for its nephrotoxicity, and the toxicity increased accordingly with, of course, the dose. If we're going higher dose, the toxicity is going to increase. If we increase the duration, the toxicity is going to increase. Also, reduced renal mass increase at the toxicity of gentamicin, and uh, as we were saying before, the baby is preterm, very preterm, so she has reduced renal mass. So the risk of gentamicin toxicity is high. Of course, intravascular volume depletion will help increasing toxicity of gentamicin and the baby is suffering from low blood, pressure, low blood pressure, which will also cause increasing gentamicin toxicity. Okay. Same baby. After the blood culture results came, it came negative. The antibiotic was discontinued by 72 hours of life. Serum creatinine at the urine output sorry, increased to 1 mL per kg per hour and serum creatinine value was 1.5 mg per liter. She remained on the ventilator and had bounding balls and active recordium and loud continuous murmur. Echo was done, showed BDA and retrograde diastolic aortic flow. And they are going to place in state. Okay. First question. Can a large PDA affect renal perfusion? The problem is with the reversal of diastolic blood flow from the descending aort. This will result compromised blood flow to organs distal to descending aort. And the most important organ distal from the descending aort will be the kidney causing low renal perfusion which will limit the excretion of metabolic product generated in under perfused organs 
which contribute to a systemic metabolic acidosis. So the problem mainly in the descending aorta, a reversal of the systolic blood flow from the descending aorta. Okay. Second question, which in said can have least effect on renal function when it's used to be the closure. Incense used for PDA closure are endomethacin and ibuprofen. Both are nephrotoxic. All incense are nephrotoxic, especially in preterms. And the more preterm the baby, the more susceptible the baby to have nephrotoxicity from an incense. However, profen has a safer profile than endomethacin. So in this case, I'm going to choose profen. Okay, let's continue. As a result of her hemodynamically significant BDA, she received two doses of profen. Her urine output decreased to 0.3 milli per kg per hour. Her serum creatinine increased to 1.8 milli gram per deciliter in the next 24 hours and continued to increase to 2.2 mg per deciliter 72 hours after profen was given. She appears puffy but do not require higher ventilator support. Echo is done. PDA was closed. Does this infant have AKI? Okay. Uh, when we're evaluating kidney function in neonates, we are evaluating history. We are evaluating a clinical diagnosis, okay, or, or clinically. Also, we are evaluating lab values. Clinically, the baby is puffy. Okay, uh, the baby will ha suffering from a lot of risk factors. She's taking profen, which is nephrotoxin. She was an angiotoxin, which is nephrotoxin. She was hypoxic. She was low perfusion. So she have a lot of risk factors to AKI. Okay, let's talk about uh, lab values. Serum creat has increased. Serum creat does not increase until renal function is reduced by 25 to 50%. However, serum creat level in very preterm babies normally increase in the first few days of life after birth. So, serum creat alone cannot be an indicator of AKI in very preterm baby. Okay? Okay. Often, neonatal AKI results in polyuric renal failure. Making urine output is not a very reliable measurement for renal function. Although, in this case, we're having urine output decreased from 1 milli to 0.3 milli per kg per hour, while serum creat increased to 2.2 milligram per deciliter, making the diagnosis of AKI is very well accepted. So this baby is suffering from AKI. Okay, what are how what can we do to manage AKI? As we said in our lecture, to manage AKI, to manage AKI, we have to give fluid challenge test, IV fluid, uh, 10 milli per kg saline, okay, and check whether the baby is going to respond or not. If the baby is responding, mainly it's a, a pre renal thing. If not, it's uh, renal or parenchymal thing okay as well uh, we have to manage the complication if there is hyperkalemia if there is hyponatremia if there is metabolic acidosis um, we have to check the fluid manage and we have to manage the fluid we have to check the nutrition we have to check if there is any uh, complication that acquired whether the baby in need of dialysis or not okay and thank you so much for your time. If you're interested in knowing more about renal failure, join us in our course. Uh, also, um, if you have any question, just email me and I will answer you. You're going to find these cases and the answer written in our blog. I will leave the link. Below, you can get into it and check the answer written. Thank you so much for your time.